Cryptography has been a hot topic in recent times, starting from Telegram that introduced, since the beginning, the encrypted end-to-end -end chats, followed by WhatsApp that recently introduced encryption for all chats. Now, today I want to teach you the basics of encryption, starting from the most basic and probably most useful encryption that you can use in your day-to-day -day life. I'm talking about asymmetric key encryption. So with no further ado, let's get into it. So before getting into practice of what it means to actually make an encrypted communication, I will try to explain you how it works. So let me introduce you to two of my best friends, Alice and Bob. Now, Alice and Bob want to communicate, but they don't want anyone to know what they're talking about. They don't want anyone to intercept the communication between the two for whatever reason. So they want to exchange messages between each other using encryption. To make things easier, let's pretend that Bob wants to send an encrypted message to Alice. So what needs to happen is that Alice has to generate two keys. We're gonna call them private key and public key. The private key be the one in red and the public key be the one in green. So Alice keeps the private key, she also has the public key, it doesn't really matter at this point, but she does have the private key and she's the only one who has the private key and then she gives Bob the public key so the green key the public key is the one that it encrypts and the red key the private key is the one that decrypts so what happens here is that Bob writes his message in this case this is a simple string it can be anything really it can be a number it can be a picture a video everything so Bob has its message and he uses the public key that Alice gave him to encrypt it and make it something that no one can understand. This is a sample of what an encrypted string may look like. If you can make any sense of this string, then you have some problems. One important thing to point out is that Bob cannot decrypt the message. So he can encrypt it, but he cannot decrypt it. So if he takes the string that came out of the encryption process and passes it through, the public key again, he encrypts the encrypted text again, so he cannot decrypt it. And this is exactly the purpose of this method. So Alice can give her public key to anyone, literally anyone, but the only one who will be able to decrypt what the public key has encrypted will be only Alice. So what happens here is that Bob sends the encrypted message to Alice with whatever mean of communication he prefers. He could use email, telegram, whatsapp, facebook, even past bin for what it matters. So he sends this message to Alice. And then Alice uses her private key to convert the encrypted string into a readable text, so into the original string. This is basically what happens when we talk about encryption in communications. At least this is one way of using encryption in communications. In my opinion, this is the easiest and probably most secure way to make a private communication. Probably there are safer ways of doing this, but for the purpose of this video and for your everyday life, this is the best thing you can get for the least effort. So if you want to send a, an encrypted message to someone, this is the way to go to make it easy. So now let's get into practice of what it means to make this communication. So that you can send your own encrypted message to anyone you, you like. So we have two folders here, Alice and Bob, that of course represent the Alice and Bob of this example you've seen before. And let's open up them. So here we have Alice, here we have Bob. Um, what we're gonna do now is, as Alice, we have to generate a pair of keys. To do this, it's actually pretty easy. We have to write open SSL gen p key. This means generate private key. Algorithm RSA. So for this example, we're gonna use RSA keys. Out private key dot PEM. 
P-K-O-P-T R-S-A Keygen Bits 2048 We're gonna use a 2048 bits RSA encryption So we press enter for this command and Here we have our private key. I can even show you. I don't really care not that I will ever use this Anyway So I'm just cat private key dot pem As you see this is the private key it's just a string of seemingly random characters. It's a pretty long string. Uh, this makes you understand that it's really, really difficult to guess this string because it's a string so long, it needs made out of random characters. So there is no way that anyone can guess this key. So the first rule of encryption is that Alice has to keep this key for her. This key has to go nowhere. She must be the only one who has this key. And it's really important that she doesn't lose it because if she's using it for safe communications or for work or for uh, more important stuff, if, if she loses her private key, it's an absolute mess. So she must have her private key for her own and she must keep it secure. So what we're gonna do now is from the from the private key we just generated we have to generate the public key to do this what we do is open ssl rsa pub out in private key of course out public key dot pem there we go so now we have two files. Let me show you the public key. Now, as you see, the public key is a lot shorter. It doesn't really matter if anyone comes in possess of this key, since this public key can only encrypt and not decrypt text or any other kind of file. So what happens now is that Alice sends her public key to Bob in any possible way she can use absolutely whatever mean of communication she wants she can even again put it on paste bin and it will be still a safe way to do this now Bob wants to send Alice an encrypted message so let's open a terminal in the Bob folder here as you see Bob now has the public key associated with Alice so we can as well rename this to Alice public key if we want to what we have to do now is write the text and encrypt it so for instance let me just create a new document here let's call it a message for alice.txt simple txt file i'm opening it with gedit a simple text editor so we're gonna write here why do Java programmers wear glasses because they can't see sharp. Let's save it and there we go. This is our message, 68 bytes. It's uh, really a stupid message, but it works for everything. You can even send a video theoretically with this method. As you see here, if we um, write cat and message for alice.txt, we see the message as, as it's pretty obvious since cat outputs to the standard output the, the content of a file. Now what you're gonna do now is use pipes to encrypt this message. So we're gonna use cat message for alice.txt, we're gonna use a pipe here, and then we write open SSL RSA UTL, this means RSA UTLD, encrypt pub in in key Alice public key dot pem. And then we're gonna use a standard output redirection to a file that we're gonna send to Alice. So we're gonna call it message 
for alice.txt.crypt for the sake of this. Doesn't really matter anything, the extension is not really important. So as we run this comment, you see now we have another text file here. Let me open both for you and show you how it works. So here we have the original message for alice.txt and here we have message for alice.txt.crypt. And yeah, gedit has even problems trying to read this file since it contains invalid characters. I'm gonna open it anyways. You see, this string doesn't really make any sense. It couldn't make sense to anyone really. Even if we use cat, we cannot see what's in this message. So cat message for alice.txt.crypt and you see a bunch of random characters. So now that Bob has encrypted his message, he can send it to Alice. We're just gonna copy it and paste it in Alice's folder. There we go, message for alice.txt.crypt. Again, Bob can send this message to Alice in any possible way. It's really still secure since Alice is the only one that has the private key and Alice is the only one that can decrypt this message and read the content of it. So what happens now is that Alice can decrypt Bob's message and this is actually pretty easy. So for this, we're gonna use cat again to redirect the content of the message to the standard to the standard output and then redirect it to the OpenSSL command. So again, cat message for alice.txt.crypt pipe open SSL RSA UTL dash the crypt dash in key private key.pm and we're gonna redirect this output to original message from bob.txt there we go now this is the original message from bob and it should be decrypted correctly so if we if we run for instance cat original message from bob.txt there you see it why do java programmers wear glasses because they can't see sharp it's really amazing even if we open it with the text editor just to show you that it's it's real it's nothing magical or mystical it's really something so easy that you can use it in your everyday life maybe you want to automate this to make it easier and not have to um, input comments every time you want to send a message but this is the principle and it's really really damn simple so these guys is probably the safest and easiest way to send a private encrypted message to someone else without anyone being able to intercept or to know what you've written and what you're saying to the other person. So guys, this is gonna wrap up this video. Thank you very much for watching, I really do appreciate it. If you like this video, please make sure to press the thumbs up button and also remember to subscribe to my channel if you want more of this. Again guys, thanks for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next one.